my Blackpool team on the day against Cardiff in that wonderful final was Matt Jilts in goal. I'm going to put him in the in the white because I've been told to, but really we should be in the orange. But Matt Jilts is in goal. A right back with Seamus Coleman, who we borrowed from Everton. Right centre half was Alex Baptiste. Left centre half was Big Manny and Everett. Left back was the uh, Stephen Craney, the flying fullback. On the right hand side was Gary Taylor Fletcher, GTF. In here we had Keith Southern, Charlie Adam, and David Vaughan. On this side we had Brett Omerod, and up the middle, floating from left to right, and everywhere he wanted to go was DJ Campbell. So that's that's my and we played four three three. Without it, it was more a four five one, and they had to work up and back against their four four two. And um, what I was I was pretty brave, and and we did it all season, and said. If your fullback gets it down your side, you got to come back. But you can stay up, play cat and mouse, because we still had one, two, three, four. And he used to help out. Deej could run like mad. So we'd leave that one half and half. If it got switched to your fullback, you go and deal with him, and then you can go up. So it was a seesaw effect like that. Because I don't really want that many. I don't like my wingers coming back that far. but. So there we go, that, that was our plan and I wasn't going to change it, not for anybody at the time, because we were in such a good run of form. Um, I think we'd won up to that point. We beat Forest twice, home and away, which no one else had done all season. Um, and we'd won nine out of the previous ten games. So why did I have to change? And it's probably the, the only time in, in my old career where I could concentrate 100% on what we're going to do and I believed we could outscore them whether I believed even if I put a defensive structure out I didn't think we could stop them scoring with with Boothroyd and Chopra and Whittenham and Ledley and Burke and McPhail sitting in you know I didn't believe we could stop them scoring so I believed we could outscore them and I knew exactly how we were going to do it and I can show you very simply on air, when they didn't have the ball, Chopra and Bouvroy, Chopra would run and work, but Bouvroy didn't really want to work back. So they were a four and a four, and they played tucked in quite narrow. Burke was the only real winger. Whittenham could play with McPhail and Ledley. So I knew we had to switch it. Right, I knew we had to switch it, because what I'd like to do was leave my two centre halves there, let all my midfield three rotate and then push both my full backs up like that. So you haven't got to be a genius to work out. It was a really hot day. We're so used to doing this anyway. I had Stephen Craney doing that, Seamus Coleman doing that, Gary Taylor, Fletcher, Brett Ormore, they could both win a header and DJ could move. And my midfield three, I didn't think there was anybody better in the league at the time because they complemented each other so well. They would come in and rotate, and we'd done a lot of work on that. And they'd just go and get it. So you ain't going to be a genius to work out that we can outnumber them there, but we worked on switching it. And we would constantly, if you can get in with a switch, say if it's over this side, if they got their numbers like that, we were brave with our other fullback, so we just worked the switch. And we've already outnumbered them. And that was it. That was what we did. We probably played too many long diagonals on the day, to be honest with you. We went a goal down and then we went a second goal down, but I knew we could keep going and we would keep motoring. And all we spoke about is they're gonna be a narrow four. These two are a little bit lazy, they won't one of them, one of them won't come back, so we can outnumber them if we work that switch. And I had so many people good at hitting that switch, it was unreal. David Vaughan, left foot like a wand. Charlie Adam could hit him in his sleep with his left foot. Probably just topped Vaughan his left foot, to be honest. And Keith Southern, the most improved player I'd ever had in my whole life with the ball. Without it, nobody was better than him anyway. It's getting their faces, that's what he used to say. And him and 
him and Vaughan used to do Charlie's tackling, but they used to rotate so well and move so well that that was what we were going to do. And they understood why. So if we switched it and they all got over and blocked it, then we would still leave that like that. We'd work the switch, over it come, our fullback would be there. <coughs> it was a midfield, deep, deeper one on a midfield free, whichever it was, it was his job. If we lost it, to press, press, step in, and we've more or less got free, centre half. He dropped in centre half, left back, so our left back being up here didn't matter. So that's what we talked about. But if we lost it, we had to have an immediate transition into winning it back. Winning it back, winning it back, winning it back. And if you look at the stats on the day, they were supposed to be the better team. And I thought we played so well that we were the better team. And it wasn't just we. It was from coming from behind again. The lads didn't get knocked. They kept their patience. They kept going. And I can't tell you how proud I am of them because they implemented everything. It really does come from exactly the same principle I'm talking about because we switched it and we switched it and it went over to the right right hand side to Taylor Fletcher and then all of a sudden Seamus Coleman is picking it up and he's so high up the field and he was so good with the ball at his feet that he can feed a little ball into DJ Campbell. And all I remember at the time, because we had the wind in ourselves, we just equalised with a fantastic free kick from Charlie Adam, you know, and, and then, and then we, uh, sorry, that was the first equaliser. The second one was a, a scrambled corner from Taylor Fletcher where he got his face kicked and he put it in. And, but it was the second phase that we did really well. He and Eva hooked it in. And so the lads were really buoyant. So we were on top, we knocked them. They almost thought, oh, we're gonna win now. But they didn't count on my boys' spirit at the time. Well, anyway, it came out to, to Seamus, he rolled a real clever ball into DJ. DJ went to do some half slipped. And all I ever spoke about was the front three. You've got to be inside your fullback to have a chance of scoring. So you're not a wide man, you're a centre forward. Play out wide for me. And interchange all the time. I don't want you playing out there all the time, Brett. I want you to go and take DJ's place. I want DJ to come out here. Because you're not a winger. You're a centre forward playing out there. Now that was the hardest thing I had to get into them, but every one of them knew by the end of the season that's what they did. So it was no luck that DJ slipped and the ball rolled and who was inside his fullback and who got a strike at it? Brett Omerod. That was all we did in the final and it led to the most memorable feeling I've ever had in my life of standing there and seeing this wonderful colour all the way around Wembley and they were all like, all singing and all dancing. And I was stood up here looking down there and they were all around, uh, wow. But those lads did it. They did it with movement, they did it together. They did it from coming from behind because we went, we went behind against a good team. But basically knew, they all knew their roles. They all wanted to do it and off they went. And it was an absolute joy to have been fortunate enough to work with every one of them.